Mr. Kano, I'd like to ask you another question. Sure. So the Omicron variant is a huge concern. The Federal Reserve warns that um, the, because of how easily this virus spreads, the new variant, people may be discouraged from going to work, from going you know, into their offices and, and work workplaces. So I want to ask you, what can be done to mitigate the global supply chain crisis? Is it about booster shots? Is it about vaccines? Everybody needs to get vaccinated. What can be done to mitigate the global supply chain crisis? Uh, first, thank you for inviting me on the panel. I, uh, it's uh, really an honor to be with the, uh, with the gentlemen and be able to talk to the ladies and gentlemen here on, on this very important subject. I'm, I'm about to say something which might not go down very well with some people, but it's a reality. And the reality is we have to stop scaring our population. It's as simple as that. Um, we, we are now a year and a half, near two years into this disease. We understand this disease is, is, is uh, here. Uh, we have dealt with it. We need to stop every time there's a new variation, a variant of this disease saying, oh my God, this, this sky is falling. Um, the old story of chicken, licken, uh, ch chicken little. We can't do this. Every time we do this, we do a lockdown. It, <coughs> it causes a ripple effect. Each country starts playing politics with one another. To what degree am I going to allow you in? What am I allowed you in? In travel, uh, IATA, which is the governing body for, for travel, cannot convince governments to open up the borders. Um, South Africa has had punitive damages done to it because it came out and said we have a variant and what will cause is a lot of countries next whoever has the next variant will say you know what I'm not telling anyone uh, and then we have more problems we need to stop focusing on that aspect and start saying you know what it's time we understand how to function with this, with this uh, disease we know we are taking some protective measure and we need to start to function because the other aspect of it in terms of supply chain disruption if I'm going to hire people to come and to work, and I think tomorrow they're going to lock down and shut down everything, this is the expense I have to pay. I'm not going to hire. I'm going to take day contractors, get them there, but they're not going to be good enough, and they're not going to be producing, and they don't have the goals, and they don't have the direction. So I'm causing a, a continuous problem. And then this blame game that happens between, sadly, between governments to government, uh, and you saw this, um, sadly, uh, uh, we, we as, a, as the world were just looking around and seeing what was being said between the U.S. government and, and the Chinese government in terms of who's to blame uh, of the, uh, the COVID. And it causes people to start to panic. When is the next wave going to come? What is going to happen? When are we going to get shut down? Travel, for me, is the best way to gauge the health of the economy because the more people are traveling, the more trust there is that things are functioning. The less travel there is, the more there's people who are afraid and would rather stay at home. If you want the economy to continue to function, for, I think, uh, and not because I'm living here, but because I see it, I think uh, Dubai was an example for the rest of the world. It said, we're opening, uh, this I think was started in August last year, it said we're opening up the, the, uh, the uh, uh, economy, well, we're going to take certain precautions, we're going to allow certain things to happen. We're not going to stop people from coming in. We're going to do testing. We're going to do uh, social distancing and all that. But we want the economy to function. At the end of the day, I don't want to... Uh, there's, a, there's an old expression saying the, the operation was a success, but the patient died. We don't want that in the global economy. So we need to stop thinking of every variant and thinking it's going to destroy everything and start thinking, okay, there is a variant. We need to, we need to handle it. And we need to start giving a bit more confidence in the economy, in the market, with the people, to make them feel it's safe, to any degree, to whatever degree, it's safe, come back to work, come back and function as normal as possible. I've got another question for you. So do you think that with the Delta variant that, that happened, people who are involved in the supply chain, the shippers, truckers, every person involved in every aspect of the supply chain, have they learned where the serious bottlenecks are in the supply chain? And so possibly, you know, they'll be able to manage the Omicron variant better, learning from the bottlenecks that happened during the Delta variant. Uh, the one thing that we did see, and you will continue to see, um, while I agree with the professor, um, globalization is not going away. 
but there is a bit of localization of globalization that's going to start to happen. So I want things within the vicinity, a certain vicinity, and get things to function. Um, I don't want it all the way to the, the last part of the world because it's cheaper, uh, because I don't know whether the supply ch uh, chain will get the product to me, and we are experiencing that. Uh, there also, uh, there's also another aspect, and this is important. Um, when the world was flowing in terms of economy and it was continuing to grow until, say, 2019, uh, irrespective of all the ups and downs, the, you couldn't get enough product out of China. China actually started becoming such a significant country, and rightly so. But the problem is um, all the shipping lines started to build those large motherships. The problem with a mothership is you don't have enough, uh, what you call, depth in a lot of the ports to be able to get the ship inside. So you have a very limited number. And because, because of that, they were not building the smaller ships with feeder ships, which are the ones who would go to the smaller, uh, smaller ports so that I can actually take the products. That had an effect as well. Uh, but the most important aspect, and, and honestly, in any trade, any trade that happens, in any issue of supply chain, in any issue of, of uh, business, if there's no trust, nothing happens. Thank you. Given the current economic climate, is it wise for businesses to shorten their supply chains? Is it a wise decision for businesses to shorten their supply chains? And is nearshoring a more viable option for businesses nowadays? Uh, that would depend completely on your outlook. If your outlook is short term, then yes, you're going to do an immediate knee-jerk reaction. If your outlook is long term, you will adjust. You'll do a technical adjustment for a situation that you're currently in, but with a long term outlook. So it, it really depends on the outlook of the company. Um, and I think any company that wants to look um, to survive, you cannot just say, you know what, it's a blip and I'll forget about it. But you can't also say it's the most important aspect and I will only focus on it. You have to strike a balance between long term and short term. Being able to understand that is what allows a company to become a successful company. Um, to what degree do I involve my employees in, in that aspect? Because, again, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to be talking in terms of ensuring that I do get the supply I need. Um, uh, to what degree am I talking to my partners uh, to make them understand, yes, uh, there is an issue, but can you help me out? Because in the short term, I need your help. At the end of the day, it comes back, again, I know this sounds like a very, I'm being rhetorical about this, but it comes back to the issue of trust. I have to have trust in my partners. I have to have trust in my employees. I have to have trust in my business suppliers. And I have to trust that people will want to do what's the right, what's the right thing. That might go against what people think happens in business. But the reality is, what am I focused on and where do I want to get to? The more I can understand short-term issues and long-term issues and not conf uh, conflate the two, the better chance I will have in succeeding. It is, it's really an issue of good management and, to be honest, when you have crisis, great leadership. Thank you. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience on this topic? Um, first, thank you for coming to Dubai. This is very important, uh, to see that there's people from all over the world coming here, making this a live city. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come and see the expo, to see what, what the world has to offer. It's not, just, it's not just the UAE, it's the world. Thank you for continuing to have trust in, in continuing to do business. This is important. You are the lifeline, you are the blood of this global world. The more you add, the better we are. So I want to thank everyone for taking the time to make this a successful, not only event, but a successful world. We need more people to put, uh, uh, put their trust in what they're doing, perform, and give people the opportunity to also believe that there is hope. The worst thing you can do to anyone, business-wise or any otherwise, is if you remove hope. And the pandemic nearly did that. I'm so happy to see that there was a people, there were leadership who said, no, no, I'm going to give you hope. The world is functioning. We're going to move. And you're the result of this. So thank you. <laughs>